Well, I was just reading this morning in the Bible about God's great love. His amazing love. So great that Paul even asks over there in Romans 8, 35, he says, Who shall be able to separate us from it, from this great love? Then he answers and says, Well, no creature in heaven or earth or under the earth. I'm always reminded that any sorrow that we have, any trial, even ourselves, you know, can't separate us from Him. And over John the Apostle, uh, the Apostle, he says that God is love, and that's in 1 John 1, uh, 4 and 8. And love keeps asserting itself, even without an argument. Nobody can argue that God's love and God's truth keeps coming. No matter how much you cut it down, it's like the grass, you know, no matter how much you cut it down or pave it over, love's going to come back. Love's triumphs over all the devices of man. And of course, I'm talking about God's agape love, God's divine love, sometimes called charity. So all the devices of man try to limit it or instruct it. You know, God's divine love is displayed in Jesus. And that's displayed and found in the Holy Spirit that rises, it overtakes all the packages. I like to talk about packages of theology that man has created in himself. These packages thought him up, you know. And man places, you know, the exegetical or the drawing out of meaning and instruction from God's Word. But man is a flawed entity. We know that. And it's delivering, you know, when, when you get a package of theology, it's a person's interpretation of the Bible, which is all, all true and it's all certified and it's uh, the final authority. But man holds his packages up and his prescriptions and, and the packages are, are varied in they might be Calvinism or Methodism or Dispensationalism or Preterism or some other theological ism or denomination. But I'm thinking of Paul when he declares that if we have not God's divine love, the charity or the agape, we are a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. We've heard that many times in the love chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. So his love is amazing so amazing that it was just you know many people have written songs about it even Isaac Watts who wrote that great hymn you remember uh, love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my all the full powerful revelation of Christ overshadows all these squabbling theologians <laughs> because they forget that God can bypass them bypass them all we read the words of Jesus, and I love what it says in First John, I mean, excuse me, in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 26, and uh, he says, The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. See, being around Jesus and the Word of God, that gets planted in you, so that you can bring it forth at the time when God calls you to bring it forth. So divine love is only fueled by His Holy Spirit. For you know that His Spirit speaks only of Jesus and speaks about all the things that Jesus did. Plus it yields that peaceable fruit of righteousness as we learned in also in Galatians 5, 22. It's the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faith, you know, all that fruit of the Spirit, that fruits is coming out of it, and the fruit tells us something, tells us whether we're on the right track <laughs> or not. Yeah, and I know that people say, you know, uh, what shall we do with so many of the cults around us preaching a false gospel and a false Jesus? You know, what do we do about that? I have to look back over and see what Jesus said about the kingdom. And I remember the mustard seed in Matthew, chapter 13, verse 32. He says, uh, this is a small seed, guys. A small seed, yet it contains within it the whole kingdom. So it is with the gospel. 
If I plant the gospel acorn, I plant the mustard seed, and I tend it with faithfulness and God's precious love and substance, what comes up out of that is a whole different, very unique plant. It comes up, and that is not patterned after, you know, what you see on TV, a successful church, a popular denomination, some kind of model after man, or uh, what the world says. And I know people like su success in it, and they try to copy some kind of format. But you see, when God gives you the Holy Ghost, it's after Him. It's not after me or you. And the Bible says that this tree, or this great mustard seed tree, it grew up. Even a great tree, it says, overshadowing all these squabblers and theological fighters, you know. We look under that great tree, and what can you see in the Spirit? You see that there are few that can compete with, the, with that dominance of God's truth in His gospel tree. So to use that analogy... If you look at Matthew 13, verse 32, says that when it is fully grown, this tree, this mustard seed tree, is larger than any plant in the garden. Its branches spread out and it crowds out all the other lies and the falsehoods and things that try to compete against it. Because truth has its own dynamic. It has its own way of breaking through man, man's lies and all the deceptions that come about. So, all of man's vanity is overshadowed by God's exaltation, being exalted in our spirit, in our soul. And everything else is going to be withered away and it's going to be judged by fire. Uh, and so please, you know, don't be surprised God does not dwell in corporations or denominations or boastings of good works or in temples made with hands. Neither is he a respecter of any person, any man. He's the Lord, and you're to call, you're called to serve, I'm called to serve him alone. And some say, you know, Brother Bill, uh, you know, what about the philosophical questions that come out? What about the apologetics and theology? You know, what about Augustine and the Church Fathers and Thomas Aquinas, Luther, Calvin, Edwards, John Wesley? What about all these guys, you know? Yeah, I know, you know, I know there's a place for that. But what comes to mind first, and you don't have to argue, but just give an answer. Give an answer for what Jesus did for you. What did he do for you personally, you know? That's what we all got here, folks, you know. Simply this, once I was blind, and now I see. The kingdom is not in words, but in power. No one is truly convinced and saved except by the Holy Spirit, you know. No man can come except the Father draw him. So it's not us, it's not our devices, it's not how loud our band plays, you know. So we can avoid some traps of fleshly debates that are without profit. Step away. <laughs> but instead of that, I think God is saying, learn. Learn, learn, learn again. For all that God gives you, and you don't know, you don't say, like I, I've said a couple times, you know, why'd you put me in this place? Why, you know. <sighs> you know, you're loved of God, and that's a fact. Anything good, or bad that comes your way becomes a lesson unto you that you may profit from it in the inner man. He's called us to profit from it. All the stuff that comes, all you know, all the, even the garbage that comes. Take it and profit and learn and then turn around, go water and nurture again that great gospel tree, that unique tree that is in fact the Word of God, the kingdom of God and be faithful to that make a deal with him make a covenant with him become a covenant person and then you can agree with Paul you know over there in um, Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 he says that without murmurings and disputings we be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in a midst of a crooked and perverse nation wherein you shine as lights in the world 
holding fast the word of life. See, it's holding fast onto those things that we know that have been manifested in us and also proven to us by revelation in our spirit. So, here's Christ's gospel, which is not framed or standing alone in this theology, this package, <laughs> but in the whole counsel of God and all that that produces. Because it does produce a divine hope and it resides in the divine love of God in Christ. Which Paul says over there in Romans 5, uh, he says, it's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. So God bless you this week, and keep you in safety, keep you in service, until we see you up on, on Saturday, 5 p.m. I just got to say praise the Lord, and I got to say amen. <laughs> Have a good week. God bless.